Just let me hear some of that rock and roll music Any old way you choose it Hello, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl and I'll be spinning some rock and 50s records every week here on my channel as well as sharing some cool Coca-Cola collectibles and other neat vintage finds. Stay tuned! Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl back with another great video for you today and in this video I'm doing something different, something fun, and something totally awesome. You guys are going to love this and yes, we are still talking vintage. So I got inspired by George the Antique Nomad and Trusty Huckster Mercantile. They did a phenomenal vintage deep dive into cameras and I was mesmerized by all of them. I learned so much. The special was phenomenal. Like I said, you guys have got to go check it out. I will link it down below for you so you can watch this. But what I thought that I would do after watching the video was I would turn a camera into a lamp because George showed so many cool Art Deco cameras with those Art Deco fronts and I just fell in love. Uh, I was smitten from the beginning, you could say. And I know how to wire lamps because of my grandfather. He was an electrical engineer. He worked for IBM. And he would tell me stories of transistors and diodes and flip-flops and all the complicated stuff that they would wire into computer circuits. And he even remembers the first LED light going in a computer and being totally amazed by that. And I still remember those stories and cherish them a lot because they are just amazing. So I loved working with him as a kid in my workshop. It was just my happy place. And today I've had so much fun working on this camera. So I'm going to show you step by step what you need and how to do it. It is very simple. You do not have to be an electrician. Of course, this is wiring. Wiring can be dangerous. So again, take that into consideration. And if you guys are nervous about anything at all, call your electrician and get help. But I think that everyone could do this. And it's a good skill to know how to do basic wiring on a lamp or any type of fixture like this. So let me show you the camera. And of course you're seeing it now finished, but I will show you step by step how to do it. So this is a Spartus flash camera, Art Deco. Here it is. We have a lamp. This is so cool. And uh, this camera was produced in the 1940s and it's so Art Deco. I mean, look at that front and then you have this awesome striping on the top of the camera with this leather handle and the stripes going down the side. So, so cool. This is Bakelite. You can sniff it by rubbing it and then sniffing it. Yep, totally Bakelite. It has that just Bakelite smell. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's something you'll learn when you are around Bakelite and you smell it. It just has that smell. So this is a great camera. The reason why I chose it, not only because it was Art Deco, but because it had this uh, nice wide open area where a bulb would have gone and I could outfit it for the light socket. So that really worked well for me. So what you're going to need to do this project is just a few things that probably you guys have lying around at home. Now there are a few things you will need to pick up from your local hardware store. With social distancing, I was able to order from Lowe's.com. I am not sponsored by them, but they delivered within two days and everything was great. So let me show you what you need. You need a standard lamp cord. Now you can pick between, I think, black, silver, or gold. I got silver. I thought it would match this camera really nicely. You're also going to need a lamp socket. Now I want to talk about this a little bit. You do need a lamp socket that's rubber because, it, and this is just my opinion, you could use a plastic light socket, but in my experience they are harder to fit into something. So if you're retrofitting um, a camera or outfitting it, you're going to need something that has grip so you can kind of push this into a slot that's not made for the socket. So if you get plastic, it's going to be a little bit trickier. And I learned that when I was making my phone lamp because I have a plastic socket 
and that is all hunky dory but gluing it was a pain because plastic is hard to glue to plastic so i like the rubber and the nice thing is is it has two wires already connected to it so you don't have to um, necessarily wire the wires to the light socket it's already done and it's nice and long so you can snake it out the back so you'll see what i'm talking about so you want a light socket like this you also are going to need an on off switch now you're probably telling me katie in your last video you talked about a lamp you made and you said to get one that's pre fabbed on the cord and that is true of course with the pandemic i couldn't get one so i'm going to show you how to put one of these on and to be honest they're very easy it just saves you time if it's already on here but if not no big deal get it and you're good to go you're also going to need some toothpicks just so that you can put some glue on them and glue the socket to the inside of the camera you're going to need heat shrink uh, wire wrap. They look like this. They have a metal banding on the inside and then it has this uh, tubing that has glue on the inside and that is how you're going to connect your wires. You need a lighter so that the heat shrink can be activated and the glue will melt and connect the wires together. <laughs> Of course you could use a heat gun but i am not near my workshop right now so i don't have those kinds of things with me but i was able to bring home some tools before the pandemic started and keep a little tool bag here so i could do small projects like this so that is great so with that theme you're going to need a drill now i have a 3 8 drill bit on this that is the largest drill bit that comes in a standard kit and you will need that because you're going to have to drill a hole through the camera so that the cord can snake out the back. Now you want to do that in steps so you will need several other drill bits. Given that this camera is Bakelite I don't want to just go straight for the big drill bit right away and crack the Bakelite. So I'll talk more about that but that's why you need several sizes of drill bits. You're also going to need a pair of pliers or electrical um there's a name for that and i can't think of it but electrical pliers you know where they have the wire cutter and the wire stripper and the pliers all in one that's really the best tool to have but needle nose pliers work just as well and you need to make sure that of course it has the little wire cutter on it so these are great flat nose pliers won't work very well and you'll struggle so needle nose is important you're also going to need a pair of standard scissors just so you can cut your electrical tape which you're also going to need it doesn't matter what color mine just happens to be red you're also going to need a glue like e6000 i like e6000 because it adheres to many surfaces metal plastic i'm sure wood i mean it must do a ton of other things i mean mine's I've had for years you can see that it's all messed up but it still works so something like that I also like CA glue you guys probably have never heard of it because it's not a common glue that people use but it's used for woodworking especially when you're doing pens and that glue is used in the airline to use uh, airline parts sometimes glue them together uh, that's what I'm told by some of my woodworker friends so it does really adhere to stuff i mean it dries quickly and it's great but i don't have any here so i'm using e6000 which works just as well you're also going to need a screwdriver of some kind i am using my trusty swiss army knife with my phillips head screwdriver attachment and you're also going to need a exacto knife of some kind and i have my knife here so that works out well and that's really all you need this progress i should say not progress this project <laughs> is going to only cost you around 10 or 12 dollars it just depends what you have at home and what you need to buy of course if you have to buy things like pliers or a drill 
you might have to spend a little bit more money, but those are good things to have at home in your toolkit anyway. And if you don't want to spend the money on, say, a drill, but you need the hold on, I'm sure you could go into a local hardware store like Ace Hardware. I don't think Home Depot would do it, but a locally run hardware store usually will do things like that for you. And uh, it's no problem. They even probably won't charge you to drill a small hole. So you could do that if you don't have that at home. Of course, with the pandemic, that might be harder. Things might be closed. And of course, we all want to stay safe out there when we're out and about. So again, like I said, I ordered this online and it came directly to my door and then I wiped it all off. So everything was good. But this is a fun project. I hope you guys will stick around and maybe you'll be inspired to create something cool like this at home. So, so the first thing we need to do is to gut out the camera. And so I already went ahead and took out this uh, back piece here where the film would have gone. And then I took off the back. If you have anything else, you might have to do a little bit more gutting. But luckily that was pretty simple. Now the next thing we need to do is drill a hole so that I can run the wire through the back. So we're gonna have this lamp socket through here and then the wire is gonna run out the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole. Now what I recommend is you do this in steps because this is Bakelite, it's plastic and plastic tends to shatter and crack. So you wanna be very careful and I went ahead and did a little bit of each of these drill bits. So I started out with a small hole and then gradually stepped up. And now I'm going to be using my 3 8 drill bit to make this happen. So I'm just going to hold this steady. You don't want it swinging around. you got to be careful. And I'm just going to drill my hole through the back here. Okay, so we have a hole, if you can see that there. And we're gonna do a little bit of a dry fit next. We wanna make sure that everything fits where it's supposed to before you wire it together. You do not want to wire the whole thing and then put this in there because otherwise you obviously won't be able to fit everything together. So you gotta kinda do it in steps. So I'm going to feed my wire through the hole in the back. And I'm gonna try to show you what I'm doing here. So let's see, I'm gonna feed, I've got the white wire through, which is your neutral wire, and then I need to feed the hot wire through, but it's getting caught on something. Let's see, there we go. So I've run the wire through and I'm just gonna pull it taut. Now, I wanna get this centered in here. So I'm gonna kind of move it around and get it to where I'm happy with how this is. What we need to do is drill a hole in the back of this plastic so that the cord can come out. Now, naturally there is this nice little hole here, but I really don't wanna mess with that. So what I'm gonna do is just drill another hole and I don't have um, a piece of wood to protect my counter, so I'm just gonna use this drill box, I'm being very creative here. Um, and so this is the bottom, and I want the cord to kind of run out at the bottom here. So that's what we're going to do, is just drill this hole. Of course, being careful, going slow. Now we have a hole for our wire to run out of. Next thing we need to do after we have dry fitted our socket through the camera is we need to connect our wires. So most wires come with this uh, tubing over it and it's insulation and we wanna cut that off to expose the raw wire so that we can connect our wires together. So you can see here that we have raw wire 
Let's see if that will focus. Can you see that raw wire that we're going to connect? So what I did was I took my pliers and I cut this tubing off just enough so that we have enough wire to connect together, probably about a half an inch worth. And I did that on the wires from the lamp socket and the wires on the lamp cord. Now some will come pre-cut and you can just pull that right off. Uh, the, this one did not come pre-cut, so I had to cut it. And now we're going to connect the wires. Now Okay guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our heat shrink tubing. Now we're gonna run this wire through our hole that we drilled first so that everything is connected and you can see I wasn't paying attention and was going in the wrong direction. But basically you want something like this. And we're going to pay attention to what we're doing here so that the wiring is right. So on a cord, when you're feeling the cord, the ribbed cord is your neutral cord. Your smooth cord is your hot. When you see wires like this, the way to tell is the black cord is always hot and your um, white cord is neutral. So you're going to connect ribbed to white and smooth to black. And the way we're gonna do this is by using these heat shrink tubings. So I'm gonna show you up close after I do it. Now we wanna make sure that we're twisting this wire nice and taut so that it looks very orderly and neat. You don't want a messy wire, that's bad. So I'm gonna show you that up close. See how nice that is? That's what you want. So we're going to connect our wires correctly. So I'm seeing that this wire here is smooth now the underside of it will have a little bit of glue from where it was glued to its body, but don't worry about that. That's not a big issue. Um, it, it's, you, you can feel clearly that it's smooth. So we're going to put it in the heat, heat shrink tubing. That is a mouthful. And you're going to put the other side in the heat shrink tubing. And basically the goal is for the wires to meet in the center and get crimped by that um, nice uh, aluminum band in the center. So let me crimp it and then I will show you what I'm talking about. So I'm crimping it so that the wires are crimped and you really wanna push down because these heat shrink connector things can be finicky and they're not the sturdiest in the middle and of course you're gonna use heat to shrink it so that they glue together and everything's better. But for now, you're just gonna kind of be careful until you glue it. But you can see here how I've connected it. Hopefully that camera just does not wanna focus. And what you're trying to do is get the two wires to meet into the middle of this tubing. Let me do this so you guys can see it. Yeah, see the middle part there? That's what you want the wires to connect to. And then you're going to crimp them using your pair of pliers or uh, wire, uh, if you have one of those electrician's um, wire cutters with the pliers built in. So we're gonna put that together like that and then we're going to crimp it. I'm really crimping the middle. This is okay to bear down and just get it crimped. You don't want it to not stick. <laughs> and like I said, sometimes I think these things aren't, you know, the best of uh, quality. And so what happens is they get loose when you're working with it. So if something happens and you need to, to retake it off, you can. You can take it off even once it's glued and then do it again. You just want a nice taut connection. You want everything to be nice and sturdy. So if you kind of tug at it, nothing's coming apart. 
and uh, that's important. So the next thing we're going to do to really make that bond happen and make it strong is we're going to use this lighter to melt this glue that's inside here and it's going to shrink down onto that wire and keep it really nice and together. So here we go. I'm melting it just so that the plastic melts onto the wire. You do not want soup. You don't want to burn your wire. You know, you want to be careful. I mean, you're going to have to put the lighter fairly close to the plastic for it to shrink down. But when you're doing this, you want to be careful. So I think we're good there. Now we're going to do a little test by just kind of tugging lightly on the wire. See, nothing's coming loose, so that's good. So you're going to end up with something like this. Let me, there has got to be a way where I can show you this better. So the camera picks it up there. Can you see that? It's nice and tight around those wires. So we're going to let that cool a little bit. And then we're going to wrap our electrical tape around it. We want to make sure that's extra secure. Uh, you know, heat shrink tubing isn't perfect and things can come loose. So just as an added security. But these feel nice and tight to me. I think that they're in there. I'm not worried about it, but always, always have electrical tape as a safeguard. I can touch them and I'm going to wrap my electrical tape just really taut and tight um, around those ends. You want to pull it taut and then make sure it's tight um, so that you know it's not messy and it's adding extra secureness to your lamp. So we're wrapping it nice and tight all the way around just like that. So you should have a nice, even wire there. Electrical tape, I mean, you shouldn't have some sort of messy contraption because it only, not only does it look bad, but it also isn't going to fit when you're trying to put the, you know, because the wire then is going to be flexible enough for you to put it inside this little camera. So what we're going to do here is then just go back over it and make sure that it's reinforced. Um, I like to do a double tape and make sure again that it's really tight. And you can hear just Louie just having a fit with these sprinklers. My gosh, she is upset and having a bad time. I feel sorry for her. I wish there was something I could do, but y'all, I have tried hugging her. I've tried giving her peanut butter. I've tried everything. Not peanut butter. I actually use almond butter. I think peanut butter has uh, xylitol or things like that, that you shouldn't give to dogs. But I do try everything and nothing just calms her down. So hopefully one day she'll get over it. Maybe um, I can take her out there and show her that they're not that bad. My friend suggested that, so I don't know. I'll try that once this pandemic kind of is over. But so again, I'm just doing the other side now with electrical tape, wrapping it nice and tight, just kind of keeping everything even and tidy. Okay, so we're going to unscrew our lamp switch cord. I've just unscrewed it. It's a simple Phillips head screw and you're just going to take it apart. Now this side is the side that we're really interested in because this is where the wire is going to go. So you're going to get a knife and I've got my Swiss Army knife so that works out well. And you're going to choose a place on the cord where you want the switch to go. So I don't know, I'm kind of guesstimating here, but I'm going to go Let's see, about here. You know, it's up to you. You guys can decide. So what you're going to do is split your lamp cord down the middle just long enough.
so that it will fit into this white part, the clear flat side. So you just kind of kind of put it next to it and measure it and split it down the middle. Don't cut the wires. <laughs> just split it down the middle. You might have to make several passes until you get through. And then you should have something that looks like this. Can you guys see that? Now, you're going to do this so that the neutral wire, which is the ribbed wire, is going to go in the top part. And it does not need to be split. So then, and then the, the hot wire will need to be split into two parts. So you're going to feel your cord. This is ribbed, so it's neutral. And then I have my smooth wire, which is hot. You're going to cut the hot wire in the middle with your wire snippers, or cutters. I don't know why I said snippers. And you're going to put it like this. Uh, there we go. So here's what it, it should look like. So you have your hot that is split running in two different little channels here and then your neutral wire running nicely along the back. Now what will happen is when you put the screw back on these little sharp prongs inside this top piece will latch down in there and cut through the wire and attach themselves to the right places. So we're going to press down firmly and screw this back on. So just make sure, you know, your wires are together nicely in there, in their channels, doing their thing and then we're going to screw it together. Now I'm going to point out something I did wrong here. I left my knife open without closing it. I know better than that. You should never do that because you might end up accidentally poking yourself. So we're going to screw this all together nice and tight. Make sure that screw's in there because if it's not in there, I mean, you don't want to bear down and over tighten it to the point where it is, you know, it's a small screw, so again, be careful of stripping. But you want to make sure that it's really hitting that wire. The first time I did a lamp, I thought I didn't wire it correctly because it didn't come on when I did it. And I was very disappointed. And then I started thinking about the process, you know, backtracking through everything I had done wondering, you know, where I could have gone wrong. And I realized that simply this screw just wasn't tightened enough. It wasn't making contact with the right points. Once I tightened it a little bit more and made sure that it was in there, the lamp worked just fine and I had no issues. So that's just a good rule of thumb is to make sure that that's really in there nice and good. That's not proper grammar, but there we are. Sixty watt bulb, and I'm choosing one of these Edison bulbs. I think they're nice. We're going to screw it in. I kind of like that it sticks out a little bit. And we're going to test it and see y'all. I hope it works. So you guys are going to be here for my first test. And it works. So woohoo. Obviously this switch can turn it on and off. That's very exciting. So we did everything right. That's very cool. So now let's get it together. Of course, you always want to unplug everything when you're working with it. That just goes without saying. step is we're just going to add some glue on the inside uh, to secure that socket.
because it is a I mean, it's it's in there and it's rubber and it's kind of uh, secured by force, you know, by traction or whatever you want to say. But it's loose. You can see it wiggling a little bit, and I don't want that. So you're gonna glue this in, just adding a little bit of E6000 and letting it dry, so that it's all good to go. Is really it. So we're gonna get a piece of whatever you want. This could be cardboard or plastic. I happen to have this little plastic doohickey where the light came in, so that works out well. So you're going to get a toothpick, and I have several here. It doesn't matter what kind, just any toothpick. And you're going to put some of your E6000 on the inside here. Now, about you guys but my e6000 gets really stuck to its cap and i do clean the glue before i put it back in but man it just oozes this stuff is good but it's messy so the reason i'm putting it into this it's not epoxy but i am going to kind of use this in my toothpicks to put glue where i want it to go so hopefully it won't be too messy on the inside of the camera. And I brought along a paper towel because sure enough, I got glue on me, which always happens. It never fails. I swear. And hot glue's the worst. That stuff is so sticky. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not cut out to use it, but my gosh. So I, I know it's not epoxy, but I kind of like to mix it a little bit. A bit. A good little bit on my toothpick and then what you're gonna do is pull this might have to take the back off for this so that you can kind of have a little bit of play and you just want a nice play to put some epoxy not epoxy but you know what I mean e6000 just sort of around this back now, E6000 is fairly quick drying, so you do want to keep that in mind and work fairly quickly. I mean, it's not going to, like, instantly set, but know that it does get tacky pretty quickly. So, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is a little bit hard to show, because this work is so minute, but I'm just putting it on the outside of the socket. And I'm just going to get a little bit more for my other side and just go around the inside with epoxy. Now, I keep saying epoxy, but I mean E6000. Holy moly. I don't know why I can't get that right today, guys. Okay. So there's a little bit of E6000 on the inside. It's not very noticeable, but it's kind of in the back. And I'm just going to take a piece of towel and wipe it clean. Because I don't really want people to see the glue. The focus should be the camera, right? So, I mean the light and the camera. So, that's what I'm going to do. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I certainly had fun making this camera. It was a great quarantine project to kind of get my mind off things and get my hands dirty again. I certainly miss being in my wood shop and this was great. So I hope you all learned something, were inspired to do something cool and I am just so thrilled with how this turned out. I'm going to put it behind me on my uh, Red Eyes Singer sewing machine from 1916. I think the black and the silver on the camera will complement the black and the silver on the sewing machine, and I am very excited to see what it looks like when it's in its final spot. So, for now, stay in, stay safe, and binge YouTube. That's why I go for that rock band.